So the new No Return mode in The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered can get pretty damn tough, especially on the higher difficulties. And having never really played a hell of a lot of roguelikes myself, there were plenty of mistakes I was making early on that I have sort of managed to figure out and wanted to pass that info on down to you guys. So today we're going over five mistakes you should avoid making in No Return. Now, the first mistake you guys want to avoid making, which is something I definitely did not avoid myself, is playing as the same character over and over again. For me personally, I absolutely love Ali. She's probably my favorite character in gaming history, to be honest, which is pretty mental to say, but she is absolutely one of my favorites. And so obviously being the first character that you get to play alongside Abby in this mode, I spent the first few rounds just simply playing as Ali until I realized that that is definitely not what you want to do. Now, how the unlocks work in this game is that once you have played two successful encounters with Ali, and the same goes with Abby as well, you will then unlock Dina, or if you're playing as Abby, you will then then unlock Lev. From there, once you play three successful encounters as Dina, you'll unlock Jesse. Three successful encounters as Jesse will unlock Tommy and so on and so forth for Joel, as well as all of Abby's characters too. And that is how the unlocks work in this game. Now, like I said, I could have easily unlocked some of the other characters in those first few games that I was playing, but instead I was literally just playing as Ali the whole time, which don't get me wrong, was very fun, but it would have been great to unlock those characters a lot quicker. So early on, do not play is the same character over and over again you pretty much just instantly want to switch to the other character as soon as you've unlocked them and then obviously once you've unlocked every single character in the game at that point you can play with whoever you'd like so do not make that mistake because that is something i'm definitely regretting as of right now now something else you guys want to avoid doing is spending all of your currency at the trading post in the opening one or two encounters of each run what I've figured out is that after encounter two leading into the third encounter, when you are in your prep time and you're back at your hideout, you will often roll a gold weapon in the trading post, which is almost a necessity for the boss if you do make it that far. Now, I'm not sure if this is a guaranteed roll, getting a gold weapon after that second encounter. It seems like it is to me, but that could just be some crazy, like I've probably only done 10 or so runs so far. So maybe I've just had absolutely insane luck, but it does seem as though you definitely get one of those is after that second encounter so what you guys want to do is pretty much just avoid spending that currency until like i said you finish that second encounter because if you get to that second encounter or i guess finish the second encounter and there is a gold weapon waiting for you but you don't have enough currency to get it that could end up costing you essentially your entire run because once you move into the next encounter that will re-roll on the gold weapon and will no longer be there once you go back to your hideout even though at that point you will probably have enough currency to actually unlock it so you don't want to miss those gold weapons save your currency for them because like i said if you do make it to the boss you are almost going to be guaranteed to need that gold weapon it is going to be very hard to beat the boss without those weapons now, before we go any further, if you guys are enjoying the video and it is helping you guys out so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There is plenty more content on the way focusing on The Last of Us Part 2 and it's no return mode, so make sure you don't miss out. Now, the next tip is very, very helpful, and this is definitely something I wish I knew a lot earlier on. When it comes to the hunted mode, you don't need to try and kill every enemy, and you essentially shouldn't try and kill every enemy if you can avoid it. The mode says to simply survive, and I've actually gotten B scores from getting literally zero kills before. It is just not worth wasting your resources. Obviously, if you get into a pickle and you are going to die, then obviously at that point, you want to try and kill enemies to try and survive a little bit longer. But for the most part, you can generally just either A, run away if you're against infected. Generally speaking, they can't really keep up with you. Or if you are against enemies who can obviously shoot back, you just want to play a lot more stealthy, which is obviously very hard because they kind of know your rough location but even then i've gone entire games where i've got zero kills and they have not actually found me and i've saved all of my resources all of my ammo in the meantime as well as obviously getting bonuses once you do finish that encounter so as much as the gameplay is a lot of fun in this game if you're really trying to make it to the end especially on the higher difficulties do not try and kill every enemy in that hunted mode if you can avoid it anyway now, another mistake you guys want to avoid in this mode is to finish your encounters without scaring the whole map first. There's going to be a lot of times when your game is actually going to end and there's going to be a lot of resources that will be still on the map that you haven't picked up. And obviously, when possible, you don't want to progress to the next encounter if there are still plenty of resources being left behind because you may definitely need them later on in those later encounters. The best way to do this is to essentially just keep the final enemy live when it comes to a mode 
mode like assault for example you pretty much have control in how long that mode lasts you can pretty much keep that last enemy alive and just wander around the map doing whatever you want and so if that is the case if you're down to the final enemy in the third wave of the assault mode don't try and kill them just go around try and find every single resource that you can in terms of all the crafting parts and ammo and stuff like that make sure to pick them all up and then once you are pretty confident you've gotten everything on the map then you can take out the enemy move on to your hideout and you're going to have a hell of a lot more resources that will not be disappearing once you move on because like i said if you leave them behind they are gone for good and you are definitely going to need them later on when it comes to those boss encounters now the final mistake that i want you guys to avoid making is pretty much just disregarding your character's play style i think a lot of people are going to think that each character has a pretty similar play style and in reality they're all somewhat similar obviously the weapons and stuff work the same for everyone else so it's going to seem like that is the case, but in reality, they all do actually have very different play styles, especially if you want to be as effective as possible. And you don't want to just disregard that and kind of play Abby the same way that you would play Lev, for example, because that is definitely not the best way to play this game. Using those two characters as an example, Abby is obviously much more melee focused. That is her strength. She also gets health back on those melee kills. And so if you're playing as Abby, you probably don't want to be using like a sniper rifle because that is not going to play to your strength. And on the flip side, when you're playing as Lev, Lev is obviously a lot more stealth focused. He's got a bow that is going to help you get those ranged kills in stealth because obviously he's completely silent. That is the way that you want to be playing Lev because if you play Lev like you play Abby, that is probably not going to end as well as if you're playing a more stealth based playstyle. So do not disregard your character's playstyle. It kind of mentions it when you are selecting your characters. So be sure to give them a look. Don't just throw them out the window and just say, oh, I'm going to play however I want. On the lower difficulties, that it might definitely work but especially if you're playing on grounded for example that is just not going to be effective and that is a mistake that i think a lot of people are going to make but anyway guys those are five mistakes you should be avoiding in the last of us part two remastered especially when it comes to the no return mode hopefully that helped you guys out i'm keen to hear any other tips that you guys have as well so be sure to leave them down below but with that being said thank you all very much for watching you guys have a great day and i'll see you all in the next one